Hello everyone and welcome to Click Theory 2.0. My name is Michael D'Angelo. I'm a musician and a drummer and I'm really happy that you're here and thank you for joining me in this series. This is the first video in a series of videos dedicated to time and rhythm. And the Click Theory system is a comprehensive method designed to not only improve your internal sense of time, but also your relationship to rhythms and subdivisions to ultimately make you more creative and interesting behind the drum set. So the Click Theory system is built upon using the metronome in unique and creative ways. And this concept is nothing new. It's been used by musicians for many years as a way to improve their internal time. But hopefully what I want to bring to the table that's different is how we can use the metronome as another rhythmic component in our practice so that we're not relying on the metronome, but it's almost another musician in the room when we practice. So let's get started. So traditionally when we use the metronome in our practice, which I hope is all of the time for you, the role of the metronome has always been to put it on the downbeat or the pulse of the music. Now, this is good to keep track of how consistent we are within the pulse, or if we find out how inconsistent we are within the pulse, but it doesn't account for how accurate we are in between each beat, or we could call the subdivisions. Now, modern metronomes have accounted for this by giving you the ability to add the subdivisions, whether it's eighth notes or 16th notes or triplets. And hardware metronomes like this one do it, and also an app on your smartphone can do it as well. Some of them even do polyrhythms. But there's a trade-off here. If the metronome's only on the downbeat, then we have to trust our own internal clock and trust ourselves that we're playing accurate within the beat, and there's really no way to check that unless we turn on all of the subdivisions, and then we're just merely playing with the metronome and we're not really improving our internal clock. We're just kind of playing with all of the subdivisions that are happening with the metronome. So there's a trade-off here. So musicians have solved this problem by taking the downbeat pulse generated by the metronome and then moving it to other parts of the beat. And what that does is it gives up our dependence on the metronome to provide the pulse to us. And now we have to think of it or feel it from within. And in this way, we can think of the metronome taking on a different role, which is checking how accurate we are in the subdivision in between each beat. The way that I like to think of it is it's another rhythmic component in our practice or another musician in the room. So to introduce this idea, let's start with a very simple hand exercise that we can execute easily and then start moving the metronome around to different parts of the beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play 16th notes in 4-4 four, four time, alternating between one measure of single strokes and one measure of double strokes. So here's what that sounds like at quarter note equals 80. Of course, with all of these exercises, we should be really comfortable playing them with the metronome on the downbeat before attempting to move the metronome to other parts of the beat. And once we're comfortable with this preliminary exercise, we can move on to what I call the basic metronome settings, which you can find in the downloadable PDF in the description below. And there are five basic metronome settings. The first is on the downbeat, the second is on the and, the third is on the E, the fourth is on the uh, and the fifth is on the e and the uh. So if you have an eighth note function on your metronome, you can use that, or you can simply double the beats per minute on your metronome. So with this exercise, since the sticking changes at the beginning of each measure, it's more difficult to go on, say, autopilot or to zone out while you're playing the exercise. And you have to mentally keep track of the first beat of each measure because you need to change the sticking. So this exercise is very foundational and essential to the click theory system. So practice this exercise to a high degree of comfort, starting slow and gradually increasing the tempo. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate this exercise with the other four metronome settings.
Of course, this isn't the only exercise that we can use with the basic metronome settings. You can use really any hand exercise as long as it's duple based and there's some kind of variation in the sticking so that you can keep track of the pulse or the downbeat. For example, I initially practiced the basic metronome settings using the single beat combinations in stick control, more specifically page five, because I use that page almost every day as a warm up. And when you're practicing the basic metronome settings, it's completely natural for your brain to turn the metronome back into the downbeats. And if that ever happens, which is again, is completely normal, just stop and start over again. If it helps, you can vocalize the downbeats and then almost play the metronome on the subdivision to start it in the appropriate spots so that you can keep track of the downbeat. So this might seem difficult at first, but it's merely something new, something that you haven't done before. So give your brain time to adjust to this new technique. All right, so practice this preliminary exercise, get really comfortable with it. And in the next video, we're gonna take a look at playing various rhythmic combinations against the metronome settings to see how they interact with one another. So I'll see you then.